Hey, here's a quick one. This was done in SketchUp. I've seen several uh, people, content creators on YouTube, start talking about wanting to build the building envelope as tight as they can and then add the overhangs after the fact. So instead of it being a continuous rafter with a rafter tail, they've come up with different ways to make this work. So if you use a two by six wall, you got plenty to land the bottom of your rafter on. And uh, you could run a rim board, I guess you would call it a rim, a rafter rim. And um, bevel it, run it through a table saw or use your skill saw or whatever. But um, this is how it would look. Uh, this is a standard eight foot stud. So this wall is eight foot one and an eighth to here. It's like, here, let's just use uh, SketchUp's dimension tool. It's weird dimensioning in 3D because it's not the clearest. So there it is, 8 foot 6 and 15 sixteenths. So you could get 9 foot um, OSB and rip it at that length with this bevel. This is a 4 and 12, so that would be 18.43 degrees, I believe. But um, anyways, you could do this. You could frame up, cut the rafters to be an inch and a half back or whatever thickness you're going to run this rim, install the rim, all this planes down smooth, and I, I separate it over the other parts over here. So if you were really squared away and you knew what you were doing, you could pre-build this entire part and then stick it up on the house, forklift or, you know, tall, strong guys. Uh, and it would look like this. Now there's people saying, oh, what if you get a big snow load right here? Um, Tim Mueller says he's going to run lags like somewhere back here, run a lag down into the wall. So what you're lagging through is from this to this is a good contact. And then you're going through this sheathing and into this interior rim. And uh, you could do that through the top of each one of these. I also thought before you sheet the upper part, you could uh, nail blocking beside each rafter and then put a metal strap on that and just let it hang out, out out of the house and then do your sheathing and you would have this, uh, I don't know, inch or inch and a half wide by whatever, 16, 16 inches, maybe 24 inches uh, nailed beside the rafter because you don't want to nail it along the rafter and along the tail because then you can't shoot plywood down. <laughs> Nails will bend. So you could do some blocking. It's going to take extra work, extra wood. But um, if your goal is to get the box enclosed, then that would work. And you could put this um, on later. And like one guy just said, he wanted to line up his rafters, which really makes it nice for this um, soffit subfascia. Well, it's not subfascia. Subframing. Because you can just one, two nails, one, two nails, and they're going straight through into the stud behind the sheathing. And then uh, the rafter tails line up with the, so the other rafter. So if you had this sheeted, you could come down, sheet over this plywood all the way along. So you would want blocking like this so that all these edges are supported. And then... Um, here it would look like this you wouldn't even have these uh outriggers on at this time so let's just move these and let me tell you go ahead and start playing with uh sketchup because for this kind of modeling it's awesome uh move let's go um 60 inches so there you go you would build this structure, whatever it is you're building. You would do your um, gable end. Yeah, I know this is all overkill. But uh, my idea of building green 
is to build it once and then it lasts 100 years. These people that want to build green using the absolute minimum cardboard box kind of uh, construction, it's going to look old and dated in 10 years. People will be doing remodels on it. So use what materials are needed, make it last. And that's way more green. Now I'm done with that rant. So um, let me see what x-ray shows. That's kind of confusing. Um, you notch your ridge. Here's the ridge. You're going to notch it. That's a two by four depth. Um, whatever this length is, is what you're going to make it down here. Plus this will be your overhang. I think I made this overhang 16 inches on the gable ends and just about 24 inches over here. I can't remember exactly. <clears throat> I think it is 24. Um, but anyways, this is not a bad idea. Uh, I don't think you're going to get a ton of snow on this overhang. You're going to have this um, nailed to this. This is going to be nailed through the here through the sheathing. So uh, that's going to get nailed into uh, anywhere in here you can nail because you're going into this rim. So you, I would tend to suggest people nail right beside the rafter just in case somebody needs to core a hole through here and they don't want to hit nails. It's just a good habit. Yeah, watch an electrician with a whole hog on a ladder hit a framer's nail in between walls, man. You'll learn all kinds of new colorful metaphors. Anyways, um, yeah, this is a pretty cool idea. I'm going to make this a detail. I don't know if I'll ever use it, but I'll have it. And um, it's just something to talk to people about. So I just noticed this was a box, and then this was the studding underneath the end rafters. But you could have balloon framed this, made it a rake wall. That's another option. Because then that would take out this hinge point. But being the one you see here, this is pretty small. This is like a shed. I think this is 8 feet wide and 12 feet this way. So, But I didn't want to draw a whole house just to explain this. But there you go. This would be fun, actually. You could build all of this on the ground. If you... If you drew it in a model and then you follow the model precisely for dimensions, then if you know all your dimensions are correct, then you force to force them to fit. And the only problem you're going to have is like if the board's twisted or crowned. Otherwise, every time you use a mathematical length that's been calculated, you're forcing that calculated perfection back into the project. So you build these, you build four of these. Um, I think they're identical. Yeah, so you build four of these. You build two of these. You know that um, this 2x4 under here, or whatever you use, and say you wanted to use 2x6 blocks, whatever that would be, the, whatever this ledger is, um, it's going to stick past the overhang, just like the uh, ridge sticks past the overhang minus this, this outside outrigger so that they touch at the top like over here that's how that goes and then you're going to put on your fascia whatever that is on a two by what is this two by four you could go with um five quarter by six or a little lower and let me tell you don't forget when you put this fascia on a gable raise it the thickness of your plywood. Don't just put it on flush here. You raise it the thickness of your plywood so that your plywood end is covered by the fascia and then when they do the drip edge, all that gets tied in nice. So how about you just remember to do that because that's, that's the right way. All right, thanks for watching. And uh, if you have any questions, just uh, throw them in the comments and I will answer them for you the best that I can. Or if you have a cooler way, a better way, or a different way, 
share that. Let's uh let's get some knowledge out there for everybody.